Welcome to the show, everyone. How you guys doing? It's the Independent Riders time. We got our Independent Riders up in a green room right now. We have a special, special guest, and his name is Chris Best. He is also known as Biker Dad. He's right here on YouTube, just started out, and he's going into a lot of different media markets with his uh, show. Congratulations, Chris. I love seeing you killing it. Thank you. It's awesome. And, uh, you know, stuff like this has really helped out. I, I hear on the road all the time for people who said they follow me because they heard about me from you. So I really appreciate that. It's pretty awesome. That's how no I problem, man. Work. China, if you can get Biker Dad TV's link and start posting it in the uh, community section, that way they can go over and check him out and get subscribed. Tell us about your new adventures, man. So, uh, you know, as you know, I was a TV journalist for 25 years. I know that's not always popular, especially among the biker group, but um, uh, this year in May, when it was time for me to leave, leave my current TV station, I decided that I wasn't just going to leave that station. I was going to leave TV and take a leap. Well, we'll leave TV news, take a leap and start my own thing. I've been doing the Biker Dad blog for two different TV stations that I've worked for for the past seven years, getting them millions of paid views and video views and sponsorships from big national sponsors. And as a journalist, you know, I couldn't take take any of that money because it's a conflict of interest and I have integrity anyway. But um, what I decided to do in May when I left the TV station here in Alabama was to do my own TV show. And uh, started it off here in the Mobile Pensacola market. It's on Sundays at nine o'clock on channel 35 here. But, um, so we decided to do that in May. The show debuted in September. And, um, you know, anybody who runs a small business knows that it usually takes years to start seeing any real success out of it. And, uh, I'm already making a living at it, and it's pretty awesome. And it's because of people like people watching this. When I walk into a room with a potential sponsor and say hundreds of thousands of people follow me, and I reach 30, 40 million people a month, that immediately perks up their ears. And so it's awesome that, like, the community who's watching this video is what makes it happen for guys like us. Rock on, man. You got that right. Uh, I'm going to have to get some of your stuff on the, our Roku channel because we're now on Roku and uh, Amazon Fire, so get you all over the place. Yeah, absolutely. You have to be one of the, the ro reporters I actually respect. You got integrity. Yesterday, I actually used one of your deals, and we'll come back to what you're going on because I really want to get your viewpoint on this. I blew up yesterday on uh, my channel. My It was like a nuclear bomb going out of my head when I heard about that 72-year-old broad that uh, killed that 25-year-old kid, and her license was suspended for 10 years. What's some of your thoughts on that one? Well, it wasn't even that it was suspended. She was just too lazy to go get her renewed for 10 wow. years. So she's driving around, obviously, you know, a person who's high on um, opiates probably is not the first time she's driving around on on, the, on those drugs and probably has been doing it for the past 10 years since she's too lazy to go, to go get her driver's license renewed. How do I feel about it? Excuse my language, but it pisses me off. Um, mm -hmm. Not only was she high, and I, I know that I'm a journalist, so innocent until proven guilty, but police say she admitted to it. She right. didn't have a driver's license for 10 years. She was driving in the dark with her lights out and turned left in front of a motorcyclist. And this happened in, Pro in uh, Providence in a town called Columbia, Missouri. And that's important to me because I went to school at the University of Missouri School of Journalism. And that's where it is. And that road, Providence, it runs right past my old fraternity house. And so I know exactly where it happened. And, um, you know, we all see this craziness on the roads every day. Just today I was going... You know, I was going 85 and at 70 on the interstate in the passing lane and almost got plowed over by some asshat going 120. You know, you know I'm, I'm speeding. I just look up and she's coming at me and not slowing down. And I, I just got, I was changing lanes to get out of the way. And I barely got into the right third of the lane before she swooped past me because I was, I was in, you know, how you ride, you, you pick one side or the other of the lane. Experienced riders know you don't really ride in the middle. You either ride um, closer to the shoulder or close to the, the middle line. And I was on the shoulder just to stay away from the other four lanes of traffic. 
And there, yeah, there's a lot of debris and crap in that part of the road, but at least I can see it. And I just looked up, and I just happened to look in my rearview mirror. And who knows what that person was on? It looked like they were on tweaking on meth or something because, you know, there's a tunnel that goes through, um, goes under the bay here in Mobile, and it's a two lane road like this in a tunnel going each way. And I can tell behind him that he's trying to pass in this lane, you know? There's no room on either side and it's busy traffic. So you see garbage like that all the time. It's not surprising people drive around distracted, drunk, high. And look, I like to party. I like to drive. I just don't do them at the same time, you know? They have Uber. Right. My wife doesn't drink, so she'll drive me around and let me drink, whatever it is. You don't have to do it. There is another side of that, too. I do see a lot, a lot of big bikers being stupid and getting drunk on their bikes, too. So, you know, we have to well, true. that as well. But, well, one thing that I, about that story to me was the day or two before we covered one where a guy gave a dude uh, the middle finger. Next thing you know, the guy ran him off the road, killed him, yeah. and only got six years. Yeah. I posted that story, too. And there you, know, you go. It's, it's crazy. And, you know, to be honest with me, you know, sometimes I'll get a message from people and they say, hey, you live in the Mobile area? I said, oh, yeah, I do, unless. Unless you're looking for the guy who gave you the finger on the bridge because you were in the passing lane, so you know you, sometimes you just got to. Sometimes you you know you just do that, and you shouldn't get right. killed for it. It's it's, no. it's outrageous. People well, don't, what's don't, up? Value, don't, don't value their own lives. So when they don't value their own lives, they sure don't value yours. And I've you know when you're riding a motorcycle, and this diner right here sits a little high up, so you can really see the people's cars and what they're doing. And I always tell people this story when I was in Memphis, which is, um, excuse me, crazy anyway. But I'm going down to Graceland for a shoot. They let us, they let me take this bike and park it on the front steps of Graceland and take my picture. And we did it for like 400 people in the event that was going on there. So I'm on my way to Graceland down the interstate in Memphis. And I look over and there's a dude with his knee on a steering wheel. He's got a joint in one hand and he's texting with the other and he's driving like this. You know, it's high texting and driving with his knee. And, you know, that's the kind of crazy stuff that's going on on the roads, but I still ride every day. Well, what's even worse is why they don't get the time that we think they should get. You know, that guy yeah. pleaded down to six years. He took somebody's life. And it's yeah, like, what the hell, man? Purpose. Yeah, we need some reforms here. It's premeditated murder, you know, when you hit somebody with your car. You, you thought about it. You decide what to do. And that's what he did. Right. Now, going back to some good stuff here, you left to start your own business up, your own show up. Yeah. How was that leaving a six-figure income going into something like this? Were you scared? Were you nervous? Yeah, I wrote a pretty lengthy blog about it on my website. But, you know, uh, the reality is, that if you're gonna make a leap like this, there probably hasn't been a better time in the history of our country to do it. And you can disagree or agree with the programs that are going on right now. I didn't wanna use any of that stuff, but I knew in the back of my head that if for some reason this didn't work because of COVID, I can call my bank and not pay my mortgage. I call and get help with this or get help with that. So the reality is, yeah, it sounds crazy and brave, but at the same time I knew that right now there's help, there's, there's all kinds of help for people. People won't work, you know, because of all, of all that help. So there's a problem with it too. And luckily I didn't really need any of it. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, in the back of my mind, I was like, okay, I'm sick of my a-hole boss and his boring gray suit and white IBM, that, like executive from the 1950s attitude. And just like, look at, you know, I see him look at my tattoos on my arms when I'm wearing a sword. A short sleeve shirt and roll his eyes. Like, I don't want to work for this this jerk, and I don't want to work for another jerk like him. I'm going to move my family across the country to another town. Yeah, I'll make more money, but I'm going to end up working for the same jerk who think who you know thinks that he knows everything and doesn't know it, know anything. And mm -hmm. I've always told, and I wrote this in the blog. I always tell every kid who will hear me is don't go work for a living. Find something that you love and find a way to make a living at it. If you're smart. Now, that's not for everybody. Just like they say in Caddyshack, the world needs ditch diggers too, Danny. 
Some people are not cut off out to do that, and you just need to go work at Walmart or whatever it is, and that's totally cool. I'm not looking down on it. But if you think you have a talent at something that is valuable to other people, there's a way to monetize it these days, and it's probably the best time ever to do that. And mm -hmm. Yeah, I was sick to my stomach. I didn't sleep. I actually did fly across the inter country interviewing for jobs just in case. And then when it started clicking, and I got excited about it, I looked at my wife and she was like, what do you think was gonna happen? She had no doubt from the beginning, no worries at all. And that's one of the things that I forget to talk about a lot is how my family backed me on this. It was like 100% in from the beginning. My, my 15 year old son, and if you have teenage kids, you know, like, you know, you'll know how, like, this makes you feel as a, per as a dad or a parent. So 15 year olds are ornery, they're angsty, you know, nothing's cool. My son not, not only showed me, but told me he was proud of him for doing this and he wants to do something like this when he grow up, grows up. And I think that right there is worth it, just showing him that you have some kind of grit and integrity to try to, try, try to make something happen. Right. Now, the great, the great thing what's, is, within a couple of months, I've already, I've already more than replaced my income at that job. Now I have expenses because I'm, in, I'm, you know, doing the business. I'm traveling a lot. I gotta buy more. I gotta do more maintenance on my motorcycles. I have a photographer I pay, and all these other things. But to have that in just like four or five months already to that level is pretty awesome. It is. What's the premise of your show? So it's just like the it's just like the blog or my social media. If you've been following me. Uh, the first line of the show is, this is not a show about motorcycles. And it really isn't, it's about people. I try to tell good emotional people stories. Um, you know, it's how, why I started this in the first place. I was going, you know, seven or eight years ago when I was working in Memphis, I was going to these biker events and looking around and there's no media coverage of it at all, zero. Now, I'm in the media, so I'm not bashing them. And the reality is these local TV stations have very, few resources, especially on the weekends, and they got to go cover the big news. But like, these are great stories. Why is anybody telling them? So I just pulled my phone out of my pocket and started shooting videos of it. And uh, the first, one of the first videos I ever shot um, got like 2 million views. And uh, within like a week, I had a thousand followers. Within a month, I had 10,000 followers. So I just thought, you know, this is, there's something to this. And really, well, and, and again, not to bash how anybody else ever decides to do anything because we're all kind of in this community together. Um, most of the moto vloggers out there are out there talking about themselves and their bikes or, you know, test riding bikes and things like that, which I do a little bit of. But my stuff is not about me. It's about, you know, the people that I run into out on the road. And I really like to keep it that way. It's about, it's about telling their stories and giving them a voice. We all have YouTube, we all have Facebook, anybody can get on there and post stuff. But somehow I have been able to garner a pretty massive audience and to be able to take those stories and show them to people and then have millions of people see them and really get a different view of what we are as bikers. And there are the people who are the normal stereotypical bikers. I'm not that person, I'm not that cool. I'm just a nerd on a motorcycle who has talent for telling stories, and that's kind of what I stick to. So it's not about me. It's about the people watching this right now. Right. What's the most interesting uh, person you have come, you know, along there and you uh, interviewed and you, you know, profiled? You, you know, honestly, the most interesting person I've ran, run into the road, on the road so far, would not do an interview with me, but she sat down to talk to me because she's a very private person and, it, and just like I was talking about, does not want to make things about herself. And that is Leslie Beaver, who's the owner of the Beaver Bar. You know, she owns the Beaver Bar in Myrtle Beach, the one in Daytona Beach and at Sturgis. And it's just some, she, she looks like somebody you'd see at Walmart, just paying, you know, shopping for groceries or whatever, but she's a freaking genius and she's like a psychic or something because she's taken her that those bars that she has that, you know, you and I and most people would be just like insane about the income from that are really, one reason she keeps them running is to keep them employed and to give, give back to the community. 
So when I was at the Beaver Bar for Rural Beach Bike Week, I was waiting outside her office and waiting to see if she'd do an interview with me. And I heard her say from the office as the managers were leaving it, let's make sure and sell at least a million dollars worth of beer today. A million dollars worth of beer in one day. And guess what? She gives it all away. Wow. Pretty much every cent and more that she makes from those bars, she gives back to bikers or anybody else. Who knows how many freaking hundreds of millions of dollars she makes off those things every year and just gives it away. So she, she just told me that she's kind of been fortunate and she has a foresight when it comes to business and, and real estate development and stuff like that. And I know this doesn't sound very bikery, but I was just, because she's the most down to earth person like us, sitting next to me worth who knows how much money and just, and, uh, and, and her story is just incredible. And she's raised children who have the same talent, who are in their own ways out making their way to making these huge businesses that are just cool things. And, you know, and she loves the biker community. And she, like I said, all the money almost did. In fact, she said, I probably give away more than I make from these bars. And that's awesome. That's just, that's incredible. That is incredible right there. Uh, before I uh, bring in the other uh, independent riders to uh, go ahead and grill you, how was your trip to see the largest Harley Davidson sign? I think it was what, Texas? Yeah, it's in Bedford, Texas, which is I actually used to live about five miles from that place. Um, it wasn't in that building when I lived there. Uh, so I was just actually, um, I was in Dallas for Rick Fairless's birthday party. He invited me there and we ran that episode last week. Um, and the, the guys with, and I probably don't really need to get into this story, but I say, I'll just say a big national law enforcement motorcycle club had like begged me to come over and cover their, their um, uh, national meeting in Fort Worth, which is about 40 miles from where I was staying in Dallas. Well, I, I had flown there because I was in Myrtle Beach on the, in the morning and I had to be in Dallas that evening. So there's no way I, it's a 29 mile, 29 hour ride. So it wasn't happening. So I rented a bike off of Eagle Chair and, uh, I, but I didn't have a helmet. So I was riding to cycle here in Bedford and without a helmet in crazy Dallas traffic, eight lanes of highway and it started raining. So I pulled over and into the Harley dealership and that's just how I kind of got there. There's another um, place called the Lucky Penny. It's right across the street, another biker, another motorcycle shop. That's where they used to be. And it's like, it, it's like, you know, compared to that, it's this big. And um, so when I went in there, I was, I was shooting a video going, wow, look how crazy big this place is. Hundreds of motorcycles. Their people are really cool. And I love Harley dealerships like this. And I'm trying to help get them to help me bring the show to Dallas. They just came up and started talking to me and shooting, shooting crap with me. And the guy goes, you know about the shield in the back, right? And I go, no, I have no idea. And just go around the corner into the shop where all the guys are working. And you can't even tell from the pictures of video how huge it is. Like they had to build the building around the shield. That's how big it is, it's three stories tall. And the, the folklore there, although everybody who's working, none of the people working there were sure that it was 100% true was that it was inside because the city was so unhappy that the sign was so big it was going to be right there along the highway. So they had to put it inside the shop. <laughs> wow. When is, can, every, when can anybody... It's the biggest sign. It's the biggest Harley dealer in Texas and top five in the world. So it's really cool to, if you're in that area. To swing That's awesome. When can everybody uh, see you on the... TV, depending on what market so it is. it's different in every market. So, uh, you know, the easiest way for everybody to watch it is just go to my YouTube channel. And that way you can also see the the um, the previous episodes all in one place. I have a playlist of the TV show. But we post it every Sunday at 9 a.m. on the YouTube channel. That's TV Biker Dad. Um, but in Myrtle Beach, like I said, I told you earlier, um, we're on prime time. We're on. We would be on right now, actually, about an hour ago in Myrtle Beach, except for the that pesky SEC championship game went long and threw us off <laughs> there. So don't run that again some other time. Um, here in Mobile, Pensacola, I'm on channel 35 at 9 a.m. Uh. On the Fox 
Ross Station. Um, I'm on the CW in Tampa. Um, the, the lawyer who sponsors me there buys time every day, so you, you can see my show in Tampa almost any time. And then um, we are in the process of adding Knoxville, Tennessee, very soon, probably in the next two weeks. And we shot a whole episode of the show up there to watch it. I will be on in my wife's hometown in Southeast Missouri on Fox in Cape Girardeau, Missouri here pretty soon. We're working with Fox in um, St. Louis to get on TV there. Um, I think we're going to be on WCUIA in Chicago. Uh, we're negotiating with them right now. And Las Vegas is coming up pretty soon as well. So it's going to be all across the country. It's syndicated, so you know it just varies everywhere. My hope is that someday Discovery Channel or somebody will pick it up and um, not only stream it, but have a regular you know, national show of it too. Oh, that'd be awesome, man. So everybody get over to uh, his channel and China Dow put that in. I'm going to bring in the independent writers right now. And we're going to start getting into uh, some roundtable uh, questions. We'll go around the table starting with uh, Dark Soul. And uh, you guys go ahead and shoot. Go ahead, Dark Soul. How you doing, Chris? That's some good work you're doing there. Yeah. Great, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm very interested in the program you have with the DMV going to the schools and, uh, you know, talking to the kids are starting to drive to look out for motorcycles. Uh, I really want to hit up with you about integrating that into our schools into my town, you know, and yeah, the surrounding awesome. I definitely can help you with that. Um, uh, the Dixie chapter of Abate here in Alabama actually started that program with the students a few years ago, but I was the first one to ride my motorcycle in classroom and uh if i could get it in there with these crash bars still i'll be riding into another classroom this week here in alabama that is so awesome man i, I really would like to find out the information about that and uh so it sets something up in this area rock yeah, on. i'm happy to do that for sure the other thing that my kids high school let me do which was really awesome last year um was to ride this dyna on to the 50 yard line um, at the beginning of the game and on the Jumbotron, we made a video, look out for motorcycles. And we had about, we had a few dozen bikes ride past the stadium while we were doing it. There's a video of that on my YouTube channel too, but it's pretty crazy. Uh, I'm out there in like kind of muddy, grassy, wet field on this bike. The football team's running through the sign. I'm riding down, down the middle of the football field with them, the cheerleaders jumping around uh, next to me. It was pretty awesome. That One of the awesome. cool things that I, that I found in that story, you saw the story, was um, A, one of the kids in the classroom was only 17, was already riding to school every day, which was yeah. awesome. And I was already yeah. experiencing what we do with the dangers yeah. on the road, people trying to run them over. And another who had a close family member who died in a motorcycle crash. So um, it yeah. was really cool to see that. And when you, and it's terrible, obviously, to crash, but to see young people who are already aware and looking out for us. Rock on. Graystar, you're up. After you turn your mic on. <laughs> That's a shot. Got me. Okay. Got to do this. <laughs> take a <laughs> shot. <laughs> okay, I'll take my <laughs> shot. Oh, I hit my beard because I wasn't sure I was able to drink. <laughs> <laughs> so these kids that you're going to talk to, um, how would you say they are about writing? Do, do you get the feeling that they want to continue our lifestyle? or? Well, I have a little bit of hope for that recently. So uh, I live not too far from Panama City Beach, so I go to Thunder Beach every time I have it almost. I missed this last one because I was on the road somewhere else. But a couple of years ago when I went to Thunder Beach, it was I was like <coughs> a kid. Like everywhere I went, I was a baby. And I, ain't, I ain't no spring chicken. So I was getting a little bit depressed about the whole situation. Um, but, you know, like I said, I met this kid in this high school who's 17 and he's riding already. Um, I have a great friend, the whole family of bikers over in um, near Herbert Field in Northwest Florida, a retired uh, military. He rides, his wife rides, and their 17 year old son rides around with a big road glide ultra. And it's really cool to see that. 
Um, but then when I went to Daytona um, by Toberfest, uh, well, it was about a month and a half ago, I saw tons of young people there and they aren't, weren't all riding crotch rockets either. I interviewed a really cool kid. Um, it didn't make the episode on Daytona Bike Week, but we're gonna use it later on. Um, you know, a 22 year old uh, airman, uh, totally into the Harley thing. My nephew, Tyler, is a Navy recruiter up in Anniston, Alabama. He's in his early 20s. He's, he's got three Harleys. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a little bit more hope for that. But one of the things that us older people, and especially if you're older than I am, and, <clears throat> because I hear a lot, like every time Harley does something different, um, everybody grumbles about it. You know, Harley used to be the innovator. Yeah. Knucklehead was, was revolutionary. You know, everything that they used to do was revolutionary. So when you see the new Sportster, instead of whining about how it's not a real Harley, take a look at the fact that they're sold before they even get to the store. Bashing the Pan America. And first of all, I've ridden four of them, and they're freaking amazing, A. And B, again, they can't even keep, they can't make them fast enough. You, if you don't like it, that's cool. But, you know, you have to realize that if we're gonna if we're gonna get younger people to get interested in, in the kind of riding that we do, and not just wheelies and um, dirt bikes and, and sport bikes on the highway, let Harley do that stuff. They're still gonna make the geezer bikes for us. I don't have to worry about it. But let them make the electric bikes. Make them, don't bash them for the Sportster. That Sportster is fun as hell too. I ain't buying one, but it's fun as hell. I rode it on the interstate of Texas. Don't tell Harley Davidson this, but I hammered it down. Zero to 60 like that. I was up 90 like that, 95 like that. What I didn't like about it was that it had forward controls and, uh, you know, and you're going down like this on the highway and you're like a parachute in the wind. That's what I didn't like about it. You needed a windshield and needed mid controls, but it's a badass little bike. Let them do that stuff if we want these young guys to start riding. We have to, like, understand that. Um, ah, great not point. Everybody wants a $40,000 Ultra. Yeah, great point. While we have a new uh, permanent independent writer, that is Danny Dilo, your chance to go ahead and ask Biker Dad. Go ahead. Um, I have no idea about him. I, I just heard him today. I didn't. I wasn't prepared at all. But so basically, you just like go to all all the events and stuff, and and kind of uh, talk about that on your news channel. Yeah, part. I mean, some of it is events. Some of it's just uh, stories too. You know. Um, right. Like I, I, I'm, uh, my family, or at least my wife's family, and I went to high school in Southeast Missouri, and every year I go home for this big rodeo uh, where we raise money for the Kenny Rogers Cerebral Palsy Center. And uh, nice. I was riding up there to go and hang out with my buddies in my hometown, and I passed this sign a thousand times: Leonard Skinner Memorial, next exit. And my family wasn't with me because I know they would whine and cry if I wanted to stop and do that. So. I pulled my bike off the highway and went down 18 miles down the road to the Leonard Skinner Memorial. And when I was there, two bikes pull up. And it's a father and a son who rode all the way from Sacramento to California to see that thing in the middle of nowhere. And I'm always also looking for stuff like that. And um, just, I'm, I am a storyteller at heart and I'm always looking for a good story. I used to joke cool, when I was still in the news is that every time I got out on my bike and I had a day off, I'd run across some massive breaking news. I'm on my bike covering, you know, for example, there's a, uh, there were three beach houses here on a private island that exploded. I was on my way to the floor of Bama. You guys may have heard of that place. It's a pretty world famous biker bar and saw this plume of smoke. And it's on an island that you're not even supposed to go to. And I just followed the fire trucks and stuff on my motorcycle, they let me in. And everybody's like, how did you get on that island? It's like, I took a lift. <laughs> make a left turn and I just got off. And so, but I kind of use, the reason I bring that up is I kind of use that instinct and that hunting for a story all the time to find those things, like why it's lemonade stand in Sturgis. Um, you know, I saw that right when it started happening and, and did stories about that. And now they want me to, when, when, now they want me to come out and, and meet with them when they um, do it again next year. If you guys aren't familiar with why it's Lemonade Stand, he just started this little lemonade stand outside of Sturgis so he could buy a Lego set last year. He sold so much lemonade that he bought the Lego set and donated everything else to St. Jude. 
this year. Nice. He wanted a motorcycle, so he's going to save up for a motorcycle. And the bikers in South Dakota went and bought him one instead. So every dollar that he earned, pretty much, some of it went to his college fund, and the rest of it went to St. Jude. I think he donated thirty-three thousand dollars to St. Jude. Oh, shit. So I'm that, just always out looking for stuff nice. like that, and people message me that stuff. I'll either, if I'm going to be in their area, I'll come and interview them face to face. If not, a lot of times I just do this and then turn it into stories. That was right. pretty cool, man. Well, Danny, uh, hey, BD, if you're listening, I'm bringing uh, Danny on the, uh, the round table tomorrow. Anyway, J Man, you're up for the biker dad. My question is about that machine you're sitting on. I love that fairing, man, and the paint. That is awesome. I love that bike. Well, tell us about it. So um, the fairing is a Memphis shade knockoff. It's from Crater. And the cool thing about <coughs> this one is that it's 80 bucks compared on Amazon compared to like $450 or whatever for the Memphis shade one. Now I won't say the Memphis shade one's a higher quality. I love those guys. I met them when I was in Memphis. I, I, I met them a couple times. But the thing is the Memphis shade one is a quick release. And this is a pain in the ass where you have to take the triple tree off to put it on. But also, you get a payoff for that because this one's not coming off. People have told me stories about their quick release ones flying off in the highway. In fact, I've met a guy in Myrtle Beach. Who, I, I saw this bike. It was a Dyna. It may not have been a Dyna, but it was a street bra. I think it was a newer one. And it was, it was like painted like this, but it was pink. I was like, I got to meet the woman who rides that bike. Well, it wasn't a woman, it was a man. And he has a pink bike to prove that he can take your ass racing you on the bike, even though it's pink. And when I saw all the women gravitating to this bike, I also saw the other reason that he painted it pink. But um, anyway, he told me he painted, he had two or three of those fairings painted because they fall off. And he lost one already. He lost one there in Myrtle Beach. So this one's not falling off. That's what's, what's cool. The paint on it is brand new. I just got it back today. You guys may have seen um, on my Facebook page, but part of the TV show we did, we're doing, we're doing a makeover on this bike. It's a 2014 Street Bob. I've had it since it was brand new. Um, it's got about 50,000 miles on it now. Um, I would, when I started the show, I put like 15,000 miles on this bike in a month. And, uh, and I can ride it anywhere. It's a Dyna. I don't care. I'll ride it to the last one. Uh, but what I didn't want to do is, this thing is like my fifth child. And I don't want to beat it to death. So I decided that I'm going to turn it into a show bike, take it to shows. If it goes to Sturgis, it's going to go on a trailer. I'll ride my other bike. Um, so my friend Garrett has a, has a shop. He's just starting out called a Black Sprocket Garage in Theodore, Alabama. And, um, you know, he wanted to advertise on the show, but he doesn't really have any money. And I said, you know what, just paint my bike. We'll do a series on it. And... Um, when money starts rolling in because people see it and they want to hire you, then you can start advertising and sponsor the show. Well, when we unveiled it today at Mobile Bay Harley Davidson, he immediately got 12 people who probably are going to have to do some kind of work. A couple of really different things about this bike, and I don't know how well you can see it, but the fairing, we painted the windshield too. So yeah. um, I thought that was really cool. You know, a lot of people are like, you can't see through your windshield. But, and on, on a motorcycle, you're not supposed to look through the windshield. You look over it. And I certainly don't see through this one at all. And this plastic here was already milky and black and couldn't see through it anyway. So that looks awesome. Another thing we did is paint crash bar. The only, time, the only colors you ever see crash bars are black and chrome. This one's the same blue as the, color, as the bike. And um, other than that, this is all hand like done. All the stripes and stuff are original. These aren't graphics that he pasted on here and clear coated over. Um, the, there are some really good pictures on my Facebook page. This shot is not going to do it justice, but I love this bike. It, like I said, it's like my fifth child with, uh, been with me since getting a biker dad in 2014. Um, so what we're going to do next to is one of my sponsors here in Pensacola is a, is a place called Cottonmouth Customs. It's a motorcycle shop right near where the Blue Angels are stationed. In fact, most of the time when I'm at their shop, the Blue Angels are practicing over our heads. Um, so everything else that I've ever wanted to do to this bike, I'm getting done now. I'm gonna black out the mirrors, the handlebars, all the chrome on it's coming off. And I know some people love chrome, I just don't. Um, either we're either gonna replace it or color coat what we can't replace. Um, this has a stage one on it. I'm gonna get a cam and make a stage two. 
Um, I know that these dinas really wake up when you put a cam in them. And um, I mean, it's already fast bike, it's already quick, but um, we're gonna do that. And I'm just really gonna have them kind of rebuild the engine because we're getting close to 50 miles, 50,000 miles on it and basically make it new that way too. And so this bike will um, only stay here in Mobile and Pensacola, enter in the car, in the bike shows and show it off to hopefully get drum some more business up for Garrett. And like I said, if I take it to a big show or something, um, all, this one's gonna get trailered. I know that's not a, half, a popular thing, but I got, I bought a 2009 electric ride to beat the hell out of, and that's the one that's I'm gonna ride all over the country on. Um, you guys may have seen some posts on this too, but uh, it's been two weeks and three days since I bought that bike. When I bought it, I had 19,000 miles on it, it has 24,000 miles. So that's in two weeks and three days. So I'm not doing that to this bike. I love it. I just love it too much. Now right. the flip side of that electric bike is like, I'm not gonna spend a dollar on this bike. And I'm like, oh, maybe I'll buy this and put that on there. And so I have spent some money on it. And uh, it's a great bike too. I, I immediately, the day after I bought it, um, went on a 2000 mile trip, just to say, hey, well this thing is 12 years old. It only has 19,000 miles on it. It's 12 years old. It's covered in rust, service rust everywhere. Uh, isn't going to run. So I rode it from here to Tampa is about 800 miles. And then we rode even further south, rode all over the area there for three or four days and then rode back. So it was around 2,000 miles to put on the bike in the first four days that I had it. And it held up. The only thing that really happened is um, the some of the brackets holding the heat shields on were actually rusted and not just surface rust. So one of the heat shields fell off and I had to replace that. Probably gonna have to replace the other one. It's about to fall off. And the other crazy thing is 30 seconds after I bought it, I hit a pothole and a kickstand broke it in half. So I had to ride, ride with my foot holding the kickstand up to the Harley dealer, went straight in there and had to put a new kickstand spring on. Well, that's been great. Awesome. I've been there too. <laughs> Bedlam, you're up before we go into the independent rider forum. Go for it. Well, J Man, don't beat me to the bike analogy that I wanted to ask because, uh, I mean, you got a Captain America type theme going there on that bike. I like that. I mean, it's a different, different yeah, tool. Yeah, patriotic it. on purpose, uh, as I'm sure is with all you guys. I'm a big veteran supporter, and so um, yeah, you know that was kind of cool uh, to do that. And blue is my yeah, I do I, everything. I do everything blue. And I'm, I'm like, unlike a couple other guys, I did do uh, my homework. <laughs> <laughs> I watched a bunch of your videos. I kind of liked a few, but I was more interested in uh, the, the very first set of videos you did. I know you do a lot of public stuff, you know, public relation type vids, but. Uh, the dead zone area that you got you had did videos on in regards to a motorcycle accident um, yeah i don't recall that it's been so long which I, uh it was a motorcycle accident that was down uh, a pretty long time a few years ago but i was just curious because you called it a dead zone area <laughs> because uh the highway was paved over grave sites and so forth oh that one that that was the very first video i ever shot yeah, and that was even seven years before I actually started Biker Dad. So I used to be, I used to work at uh, the CBS station in Orlando, and I wasn't even riding at the time. But I lived right along Interstate 4 in a town called Stamp Stanford. Well, I'm doing this right now. You can close the door. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, working from home. <laughs> I, uh, so a town called Sanford, it was Daytona Bike Week. I had gone to Bike Week just to hang out a little bit. But I was on, you know, we have an on-call schedule at TV stations where, and I'm a manager, so I was in charge that weekend. And um, like I was saying earlier, TV stations are short-staffed. So um, they called me and said, hey, we have this deadly crash on I-4. And they told me where it was. And I said, oh, I just live a few minutes from there. So I grabbed my phone. It was really before iPhones even. I had this Samsung phone that had a camera on it. And um, I shot that video. I shot interviews with the witnesses. I shot the crash scene. And what um, I found out later was that um, 
that very spot is notorious for deadly motorcycle crashes and deadly car crashes. And there's even a book about it. Basically, um, way back in the 1800s or whatever, there was a family who lived in that spot and that was their family graveyard plot. And then when they decided to build I-4, they were supposed to move all of those graves and they didn't, they just paved over them. And so this crash was um, on bike week, uh, I, I think, I believe it was the spring bike week, but it wasn't raining. It was 85 degrees, sunny. Uh, the witnesses said there was no reason at all for this to happen. They were just going down the road and then all of a sudden they just flipped over the handlebars. And the bike just flipped over on them. Like they're going down the road straight. Nobody cut them off, they didn't hit anything, they didn't slam on the brakes. The bike just kind of flipped over on the highway and threw both of them off and killed them. And um, when I, we just did it as breaking news or whatever. And then one of the investigative reporters said, you know that, that highway's hot, right? And so actually um, that reporter did a really great story, but he, you won't find the story on the internet because one thing he did kind of slimy was that he took this picture of what was a purported ghost in the area and put it in the story and the viewer saw it and said, uh, you know, that's, that picture has been debunked. It has nothing to do with that and it's fake. And he, they were right. So we had to reprimand the reporter for it and scrub it on the website, obviously, because it had a mistake. But it was a what? really cool story. If he hadn't done that, it'd still be on there. But those videos are still today the most viewed videos on my page, and they're from 2007, I think. Four or five million uh, views uh, on each one of them. And it's crazy. Wow. Well, it seems like uh, you're well traveled, and I'm actually looking forward to seeing a lot more that you have to offer as far as YouTube content, your show going nationwide. I'm just so happy for you because you're really, and it's for me to say this is big, but you're uh, a reporter, ex reporter that I actually respect because you got integrity. There's not many that uh, bikers uh, actually talk to anymore, but you do have the integrity. What uh, is your Facebook, all that stuff? Everything is at TV Biker Dad. So, um, and you just look for this logo you see here back there on the screen. It's, uh, uh, that's, that'll tell you that it's, mm. it's me. There are, some, you know, everybody who gets a certain following, there are some fake pages out there, but they're usually pretty obvious when, you know, they, they call it the real bikers dads or something like that. But um, I'm on everything TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, whatever. My biggest audience is on Facebook, so, um, you know, I'm very active on there. But we are posting our TV show every Sunday on the YouTube channel. And then I also take, you know, th those are 28 minutes long, so I know everybody doesn't have a half hour to sit down and watch those things. I also take specific segments out of that, cut them down, and post those all week. So we're posting anywhere from 6 to 10 highly produced videos every week, and uh, uh -huh. more to come. Uh, well, the biggest we thing anybody who, watching this, who thinks it's cool and wants to support can do is just subscribe to the YouTube channel. Really, if I had as many YouTube uh, subscribers as I had Facebook followers, I wouldn't even have to try to find a sponsor. I'd just be making money off of YouTube. So please it's, subscribe it's to hard, YouTube ain't it? to, to <laughs> help support this. And look, it is how I'm making my living and I hope to make a whole lot of money someday. But what really uh, is, this is about too is just evangelizing for this community. You know, I, I you know, hate to sound like religious about it, but it, we're, the, this is one of the reasons the sponsors buy into my show is because we're elevating this community and awareness and safety. Most of my biggest sponsors are motorcycle injury lawyers. And I only work with the ones who would literally give up their whole practice if they could hand motorcycle crashes tomorrow. And hey, where can I get one of them? Themselves. Where can I get one of them shirts? Uh, go to tvbikerdive.com and click on my shop. Uh, this one, uh, this is my newest one. If you can read it, it says masculinity is not toxic. Yep. I just dawned on me last week. I was thinking about uh, all the stuff going on in the world. And yeah, they're dirtbag men, but they're also dirtbag women and they're dirtbags of all types. The people I know who are um, alpha male masculine people 
aren't out there using it for bad. You know, they're doing what we did today, and we do every Saturday and almost every Sunday and all during the week. Is use that energy we get from our testosterone to go out and make the world a better place, either for the, through the work we do or the charity stuff we do. Um, I was with a different group of, um, you know, people all day long, most of them men, and everything that we were doing was supporting someone, supporting a local business, supporting a Ronald McDonald house, or uh, just bringing awareness to something. And that's what I see when, I, when I'm hanging out with my buddies, the ones that I hang out with all the time. Yeah, we, do, we, we have an inappropriate text group where we make jokes that, you know, I show my wife and she rolls her eyes. Sure, we do that stuff, we're men. But most of our energy, and we get our energy from our testosterone. That's where men get their energy. That's, and that's your masculinity. We're using that to do good stuff and change the world and support our families, support other people's families, support our country, support our veterans, support everything we can that's good in this world. And tell me that's toxic. That's BS. Right. Well, we appreciate having you on, Biker Dad. You can guarantee that Insane Throttle is always going to push you. And hopefully we get you a lot of subscribers over the next few months over to the YouTube channel. That's how you can help him continue doing what he is doing. Uh, it was great having you on, man. Well, thank you. And like I was telling you before we started this, all over the country, I've had people come up and tell me that they heard about me through you. So I appreciate it. No problem, man. Uh, oh, that, rock on. All right. Hey, uh, Hollywood, sorry. Before you go, um, were you in the military at once before or in your past? No, I'm not a veteran. And, you know, uh, just because I do so much stuff uh, that's involved in that, people kind of assume that I do, that I am. But I, I always make it really clear. I don't have a lot, of, you know, a lot of things to regret in my life. I really do wish I had served. You know, my family wasn't unique to serve in the military. It was unique for me to go to college. I was the first person on either side of my family in the history going back to the beginning of time to go to college. So that's what, um, you know, I did for my, for, for my road because um, I, I had the opportunity to do it and none, nobody in my family had ever had. So, but looking back on it, I could have done both. As really the veteran that. in the group here, I appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Rock and roll. We're going to go into our independent round table when we get back from these commercial breaks. Thank again for coming on, Biker Dag. You guys go over there and visit him. He's everywhere, man. He's everywhere. Uh, if you don't know where he's at, go to Instagram, hit me up, and I'll make sure I get you over there. But I'll talk to you later, Biker Dad. I'll see you later, Chris. Thank you, guys. Talk to you. Yep. Take care. We're going to be going into our independent round table right now after this. Add the Insane Throttle TV app on Roco now. Get content not seen on our other platforms. No censorship, no PC, only biker fun and entertainment. It's hardcore. Again, go over to Roco TV and add the Insane Throttle TV app now. Rock on, man. Rock on. How's everybody doing? We're going to go around. Let's uh, get talking. What did you guys think of the interview? I think I need another shot. I <laughs> <laughs> liked him. He, he's a nice guy. I, I love Chris. Mm -hmm. Here's Gray Star. He, he lost I don't know, I watched... with the Pan America, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But he, I was, he, I was, I was, I was, I'll tell you guys at that point. I'm like... <laughs> I'm glad. I'm just saying, I, I watched quite a few of his videos, and he loves he loves that electric bike too. He that, loves that electric bike, and that video is. I gotta get me one of these. Hey, <laughs> what are you doing? Two weeks are wrong. That's what do you? Okay, question for the round table here. What do you think of? You know what? He's a positive guy, positive reporter, and you guys know how I feel about reporters right about now with. Uh, <laughs> that bullshit National Geographic crap that came out. But he actually shows the biker community in a good light. And there's not many reporters that are doing this right now. Uh, let's go around. Graystar. Man, I think it's incredibly awesome what he's doing. But using his uh, television experience to give us writers some good 
publicity for a change. We don't get much of that these days. And no, we don't. Yeah, and I think it's amazing. I think it's awesome. And we do live in America, D-Lo. To each their own, brother. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Bedlam? What do you think about how he's put in uh, bikers in a good light? Again, there's okay. Uh, like I said, from watching just his YouTube stuff, he does put us all in good light. He does show the bike community the good side, the the, the rainbows. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, you know, that, that aspect of the biker life, you know, the people are, I guess, would want to see or hope to see, you know, but it's all positive, positive stuff on his side, you know, but you know, we, we had a long, dis we had a long discussion on this already in regards yeah. to media and social media. So right. I don't He's know if you want me to air He's my total opinion on it. <laughs> He's the good side. I'm the dark side. Uh, yeah. Dark <laughs> yeah, you guys would make a pretty good pair, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you you tell the real side, then he, then he tells the positive side. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Dark soul. Uh, what do you think, man? I really like Chris, don't you? And yeah, uh, program. Uh, very positive aspect of him. <laughs> what he's doing and what he's trying to accomplish. Uh, he. Uh, like you mentioned about the moto bloggers and stuff, you know, a lot of those moto blogger videos are about themselves. Um, now here lately, since uh, you know more of the creators are coming out and talking to more than just you know riding down the road, and so he put a shed of light to that aspect of it, which was kind of inspiring to my you know what I wanted to do. <laughs> yeah, just show more just going down the highway, you know, and showing the scenery and stuff because there's a bunch of them to do that, you know. Uh, well, he said, he said it perfect. It was all about, uh, and I'm not bashing moto vloggers because they're a tight yeah. community, uh, but he takes it to a different level where he shows the individual within the scene exactly. where even myself, I don't even do that. You yeah. know, I'm exactly. really targeted towards, you know, one bad thing or another where he goes out like the kid with uh, the lemonade stand. You know, yeah. we would have never really knew about that unless there was people like him that would put it out. Yep. I did that story. Yep. I did that. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing was about the A bait, you know, finding out that you know the A bait that sponsored the you know the DMV, you know, making these kids aware that they're getting behind the wheels. You know, uh, I just wish the autonomous vehicles would recognize us still. But yeah, that's a whole nother subject there. <laughs> Not to mention oh, yeah. autonomous trucks. Right. Autonomous trucks. <laughs> Talk about it. And that's one thing that we're going to be doing next week, everybody, is each guy is going to have their own segment on here. And we're going to be talking about stuff. We got to get Danny up to uh, date on that. But Danny is the newest member of the independent riders and you're gonna see him tomorrow because i want to make sure he gets an invite tomorrow i just get so damn busy it's uh my head spin <laughs> uh with seeing my face all over tv lately with discovery plus and national geographic <laughs> screwing me around that's really got you pissed off don't it <laughs> oh dude yeah. you know what i let's put it this way i thought i was dealing with a reporter that had integrity like chris bus he has integrity Right, I ain't dealing with it. It, it was totally blown. You should, it was you should, have, you should have known better, though. I mean, well, we the all know how they are, you know. Well, yeah, the we're problem... not supposed to talk to the media, bro. Come on, uh, <laughs> the is there's negotiations in the back end that nobody knows about, right? Right, yeah, the name, but... rank, and serial number, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, but Danny. Your thoughts, man, besides the Pan America. What do you think about how he's doing? Sorry, man. He lost me there. But, no, I think it's great what he's doing. Um, like like we've all been saying, he's shedding a light on the biker community that nobody's really been doing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and we need that, especially nowadays, you know. So I like what he's doing. Um, you know, my, my personal opinion may be a little different, but. What he's right. doing with his channel and everything, I think it's awesome. You know, it's awesome mm. for all of us. Right. So, right. It's about time. Uh, I tell you that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Definitely. I mean, you know, he's, he's shedding light on, on not only our community and, and the biker lifestyle, but I mean, he's he's showing us things that 
us in the biker lifestyle don't even know. You know, we never heard about like that, like, like that highway. I've never heard about that in my entire life. Yeah. I'd like to know where that's at, so I never travel across that motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, but yeah, I mean, you know, all that stuff is really cool. I think you know what I mean. Exactly, J Man, you're up. Well, uh, I'm glad Harley Davidson's doing something like what they're doing with the Pan America and the uh, uh, Sportster because they needed to do something, and if they didn't do something fast, they were going to be going down just like Indian did back in the day. <clears throat> You so got that right. You don't, want funny, you don't want to be funny though to get Danny Delo on a fucking uh, Pan America. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna happen. He'll be on an electric bike. <laughs> Not gonna happen. That's what. It, that's what we need. Exactly. We need a live. Happen. We need a live where all of us are test riding. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if everybody on here does it, I may do it. But I don't know. Dude, you'll probably cholo the damn thing out, man. <laughs> you know, I'll be the only guy around here with eight hangers on it, boom box, 21 inch spoke wheel. Yeah, yeah, probably. I'll figure I just, out a way to make it noise, too. Right. Well, <laughs> I'm glad to see the positives happen. And because uh, I have to yeah. admit, Quite frankly, with all the bad news I'm always covering, it kind of gets uh, it gets to your attitude a lot when you yes, see no, it. Way. It eats you up. It does. It does. And that's why I think that uh, Nat Geo stuff that we were uh, negotiating, because it was the real premise of the damn thing was supposed to be about NCOM, how clubs get together, work together. We were going to give them access to that uh deal and when they turned it on us it was like you know what i'm fucking sick of this now i'm going out on a scorch earth policy uh where can so, where can i find that uh that that episode by the way here you want me to advertise <laughs> no, I just, no you know what hit me up personally don't advertise yeah 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 message me later yeah, I don't want to. I'm not gonna even push that shit. Yeah, uh, yeah, I got you. Yeah, I was just curious you. because I had I had an SOS brother uh, hit me up and and was telling me that he was on it too. I'm assuming probably with you, and I was right. like, oh, okay. And I was like, well, I don't. I've never even heard about it, man, until you yeah. started talking about it. So yeah, it was something else. What do you guys think about oh, the coverage yeah. that I did yesterday? And it actually came from Biker Dad's uh, blog. Because I watch uh, his blog all the time. It's very because I like seeing the good stuff. And about that, about the lady who was in her seventies killed that. It really had me pissed off. That one. Yeah, me too. Well, I've, got, yeah, I've, got right two, I've got I've got two things to say about it. I mean, yes, she shouldn't have been high driving, but methadone does help people get off of opiates, like. It's a crutch, man. Heroin. What? Fuck that. It's a crutch. It's a crutch. It, it may be a crutch, but that I crutch gotta agree with you, Star. That other drug. Okay. What do you think about her not renewing her license? What about her driving in the dark, J Man? What's that's your thoughts the, on that? That's the state's problem that they didn't get her ass sooner for not fucking having a driver's license and now we have someone dead because of it why is it the state's right. problem that bitch should never been behind the fucking wheel in the first place she should have been busted long before this agree about that i mean i'm sorry i'm sorry the gentleman died okay but that's the risk we all take there's all kinds of assholes out there they're True. all high. they're all driving drunk high whatever uh, hey man he you mentioned, have to be aware he mentioned memphis drivers I've driven in Memphis before, and it's it's outrageous there. <laughs> all, I can, all, I, all I can say about Memphis is Elvis Presley would be pissed off about that area. Anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know shit. <laughs> Bedlam. There's crazy drivers everywhere. I drive all 48, man. Yeah, I've been in every go. city. Go. Bedlam, uh, what did you think about that story? Okay, first of all, you're gonna take a chance stepping out your door every damn time you you, you know when you step out. Yeah. Period. It doesn't matter who the hell you are. You're gonna run into something. Okay. Second yeah. of all, if you're gonna do any fucking drugs, lock your ass in your house. <laughs> you know, keep your ass at home. 
Like the rest of us adults. Damn right. <laughs> exactly. Second of all, second of all, yeah, the state should have busted their ass a long time ago. Put a fucking breathalyzer on a fucking car. <laughs> and if this wasn't Sharon. The fuck? There you go. <laughs> what, about, three thoughts. What, what about the fact that when some of these things do happen, they're not held accountable by just giving them <laughs> like that one deal. He only got six years in prison. She and that was three years old. She said, oh, two, what, wait a minute, what deal? Two, what we talking might about? make it eight more years. <laughs> what a freaking die. Oh, what about, say. okay, what Sorry, about the ahead. veterans? What about those veteran bikers that got hit by the damn truck driver? That if you're going to go that route, about all those guys that got their asses ran over. I know you know what I'm talking about, Dark. Yeah, I do. Yeah. That guy went to fucking court and didn't get really shit. They should have hung his ass for killing all them people. Well, if wait a second. Why not just fucking do it for all? Well, wait a second. If you're talking about New Hampshire, he's still going through court. Yeah. yeah. Well, he should have been home a long time ago. <laughs> oh, you're damn right. Because uh, two weeks beforehand, I think he was uh, in Texas or something, and they got him hopped up uh, on camera and stuff like that. He Dark Soul been in, jail in Texas. You're correct, Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. Dark Soul, you're a truck driver, and I'm sure you see a lot of screwy stuff going on on the road. I kind of, you know what? I, the point that the kid was 25 years old, that really fucks me up. Yeah. Uh, it really does because I got a, my, my oldest daughter's 29, and here this kid won't be able to, have, you know, have a family. This kid yeah. won't be able to, you know, enjoy a woman anymore. Right. What is your thoughts on the law enforcement as far as the prosecution of these people? Uh, she gets uh, she finds guilty. She needs to serve the rest of her life in time. That's that's the way I feel about it. Uh, she took this kid's mm -hmm. life, you know, and doing stupid. She made a choice. It is a stupid choice, you know, and she needs to serve in and you know, lock throw away the key. That's so don't give her any more fucking methadone. Let her fucking suffer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah let, don't, let, don't. let her go high and dry, huh? Yeah, yep. let her sweat it out in the jail. Yeah. But one thing I got to point out, though, is is the fact of, and I mean, it's it's a sad story, man. I don't care, you know, what you think, but um, the one thing I, I, I want to point out is is not Danny, having really good. What's that? I care. Come on, <laughs> tell me what you think. <laughs> No, I, I got to point out the fact that of inexperience, too. I mean, I've been riding a long time. I'm sure all of us have here. And I know what I do if I see a car coming towards me with no lights on. I'm slowing down. You know, I'm getting ready to do the to problem, make a move. You know, problem with that is they were in the middle of the country. You couldn't see her. That's what I was just going to say. I mean, well, you got that motorcycle headlight, and it's only projecting out 50 to 100 feet. And yeah, you're not seeing her coming. I don't know what kind of headlight you got, but it's daytime in front of my bike. You got cholo lights on there, man. What? No, <laughs> I, got, I got the I got the daymakers, man. Uh, dude, it's yeah. literally daytime in front of me. So you no know, bottom line. But, and I cruise back roads all the time, and I can't tell you how many times I've had, dude. I, like when they have country thunder out here by me, I can't tell you how many times I've been ran off the road. I've had cars coming at me in the wrong lane. You know, it's just it's just the fact of when you've been riding for so long, you already know that everybody around you is an asshole. So you're already paying attention to everything and you're always like, you know, you're on guard. You know what I mean? You're yeah. always always got your shit on a swivel. So you know, I'd say, you know, a little bit a, a very small piece of this situation is is just not having that experience because he was a younger rider. But I mean it's it's a sad story, man. And yeah. It's bullshit what happened, and I hope she gets life. Bottom line, our justice system nowadays is completely different than it was 40 years ago. Um, it's it's never been good, though. It's never been good. The justice system's just <laughs> been – it's been a fucking joke on, on so many levels. I mean – Agreed. Agreed. We, we, can, we can go on and on about that. You know, you, you get a black guy that commits the same crime as a white guy. The black guy gets 15 years. The white guy gets probation. Yeah. I mean, it's all about the lawyer – how much money you got, what do you look like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. If me and Hollywood go to court for the same thing, we're both screwed compared to a, a regular guy with the same record, same past, same everything, because 
the judge don't see his tattoos. They see ours. Right. You know what I mean? No, it's, no. I, I think you'd get off quicker, D. <laughs> 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 you ain't right, bro. <laughs> Daddy, you did see the key word. It boils down to how much money you have, how much bread. That's you what got. it is. Yeah. That's what it is. I mean, we yeah. see it all the time, man. A movie star can shoot and kill somebody, and it's no big fucking deal. Right? Me and you yeah. do it on accident. Yeah. We do it on purpose. Whatever. We're we're the going through all thing. kinds of bullshit. We're not getting bonded out. You know, it, it's it's ridiculous on the judicial system, man. Well, yeah, it, me, it, it, it also goes me, back to. It, me and Hang Danny's, me and, yeah. Danny, me and Danny's doing time at twenty six and Kale, man. We're sitting oh, our ass. Like, yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. <laughs> well, to get yeah, back no about the about riding it. situation, though, I get back about the riding situation. It's like, you know, the first time you do come into contact with that damn car that wants to cut your ass off, your eyes are open twenty four seven after that. Oh yeah. You know that yeah. first time, it's like. Yeah, that first time you remember it too. Oh yeah, uh, yeah it wake you up. <laughs> yeah, it wakes you the fuck up. And then from that yeah. point on, you're like, "All right, I see how it's gonna be." <laughs> you know, and it's yeah. you against the cages all the damn time from there on uh, out. Yeah, yeah, I see it all the time. Like riding down the highway, I've had. I remember one experience. I'm riding down the highway, and I had my uh, well, she's my ex now, but my old lady on the back, and we're rolling down down the highway. We're doing about 80, 90. And this truck, man, he's all over the road. I mean, all over, swerving all over. And I'm like, damn, you know, this guy must, you know, he must have been on the road for a long mm -hmm. time, probably tired, you know. So I'm trying to, like, pull up alongside of him, but I'm, like, staying way away, you know, just to try to get his attention. Like, yo, dude, pull over and take a nap, man. Yeah. I pull up next to him, and I look at his, he's got a, a, a computer screen right in front of him, and he's <laughs> on Facebook. Yeah. He, yeah, he's fucking driving and he's on Facebook and I mean he was all over the road, man. Yep. I ended up pulling him over at a stop sign and and uh and that's where that story's gonna end publicly. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly, yeah. I don't know how many times I've seen been out riding and I look over and some oh. fucking dumbass is on their fucking phone. Damn. Oh, every God, day, damn. all day, yeah. Man, I've been the I look. I, Hollywood, just like the Wall of Shame, I seen cops on their freaking laptop yeah. going yeah. down the damn yeah. road. Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Well, I'm going to play. Yeah, and then fucking play. Get the damn laptop down. Uh -huh. While you guys bring that up, let's go around, uh, starting with you, Gray Star. What the hell should happen to somebody who's on their uh, phone that uh, not a, well, not even a motorcyclist, but another car or kills somebody else? Well, one, first of all, how the fuck are you going to prove it? <coughs> I mean, until we usually, get fucking cameras. Usually, they're, usually they're stupid enough to say something. Yeah, but true. <laughs> true. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You said until we get cameras and cars. Are you saying that you want that? Oh, I fuck no, I don't. Okay, all right. No, all right. hell no. That's the only way we're going to be able to prove something like that, you know? I was, I was about to call it quits, Hollywood. I'm like, you know what? This show ain't for me no more, bro. No, hell no. no, 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 no. I've already had the Pan America in my face. Now, this guy wants cameras. Uh, Grace, there three shot. No, I think, you know, I think they should throw a fucking book at him, to be quite honest with you. But how the fuck are you going to prove it? Right. Okay, let's put it in a DUI sense, then something easier. It always seems like they get away unhurt, and it's always the other people that get killed, and they're getting sentences of six years and less. Again, money, lawyers, there you go. Bedlam. Do you what? think there should be a mandatory minimum for killing somebody with uh, on a DUI? Fuck Some state no. <laughs> I, if you keep, look, you went out, got drunk, you knew what you were doing, you got behind your own vehicle, you knew what you were doing, and then you knew what you were doing when you hit somebody. Uh, and then uh, it even makes it worse. No, 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 no. I don't care if you think I'm a deer or not. <laughs> okay? Because you took you took it upon yourself to use that vehicle, so that just became an implement of destruction when you got behind that wheel. Yep. All right. A, a lethal so, weapon. Yes. Exactly. 
So yeah. if you're taking somebody out, there ain't there. There shouldn't be that. If they're gonna, if there's gonna be a limit, it better be a real high one for taking somebody's life. That's all I gotta say. Unfortunately, real damn high, high man. Yeah. They'll Dark be soul. down at manslaughter or some shit and serve like four years. Yeah, yeah. bullshit. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that it, it boils down to the buddy part, and just like Bedlam said and Graystar, it yeah, you kill someone, you're drunk. You took the initiative to go out and do that. Uh, you know, that's the reason why they got that ride buddy system. You know, you always designate one person. You know. But that one person you trust can actually fuck you up and end up dropping you off at the wrong house. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> Danny. <laughs> Sounds Danny. Like you personal experience there, Dark Soul. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded hey, very personal. I'll drink it up. <laughs> okay, all my writers are getting notes here. Uh, Danny, on the flip side, though, let's do the flip side. We lost a lot of uh, people we knew because they jumped on a bike all screwed up. I'm glad you said that because that was actually exactly where I was going to go with it. So yep. just a quick story. I was at a bar one day, and I, don't, I, don't, I really don't drink very rarely. Usually if you see me drinking, you know there's some shit going on in my life and probably stay away from me. So I'm at a bar, and I'm hanging out, and... I'm outside having a cigarette, man, and there's these four or five guys, you know, just regular dudes are out riding, you know, buddies and shit. And um, two of them had, you know, you know, watch out for motorcycle shirts and shit. And as they're all sitting outside, every single one of them are talking about their DUI experiences. You know, like, you know, oh, I got out of that DUI, I got out of this one, I got out of that one. And I just couldn't help myself. I looked over there and I'm like, you know what, man, you're, you're a big problem in the biker world, dude. I'm like, you got here you are with a shirt that says watch for motorcycles, and you want the whole fucking world to watch for us, but now you out drinking like an asshole, and you I, I'm gonna guarantee you by the end of the day you're gonna ride like an asshole. And, and but we're, we're everybody's supposed to watch out for you. You know what I mean? It's like lead by example kind of situation, you know. And and like Hollywood said, yeah, man, we've lost a lot of brothers, a lot of friends that were out, you know, getting messed up, getting drunk, got on their bike and didn't make that curve. You know what I mean? So, yeah, the flip side is the same thing, man. I mean, if you're on a motorcycle and you kill somebody because you're drunk riding, well, you're an asshole, too. Yeah. Uh, somebody's got feedback. Turn off the show. <laughs> Who's got the phone? Yeah, yeah. It was Dark Soul. Uh, but go ahead, Danny. I was, I was hearing that the whole time I was talking to I'm like, what the hell is going on? I'm getting it again. <laughs> yeah, that was it's dark, so he's having oh, the okay. if you're watching right on. on YouTube, make sure you uh, mute it. Uh but we did we you know what, especially uh you know, we're not gonna talk about the club stuff, but especially in the clubs right. when I around, you know damn well how many people that were lost because they were freaking morons. Mm -hmm. Uh yep. Jay Man, yeah. what do you think, man, about riders who get on that bike all screwed up? Oh man. <laughs> uh I think if you drink, you better not ride. Um I've learned through past experience that if I have more than two or three beers, there's no way I'm getting on that fucking motorcycle. Um my brother in law um uh, did never knew his limit and he had several accidents and the last one finally took his life. And there is no way if I had, like I said, more than three beers, I'm parking the bike and taking an Uber or calling a cab or saying, hey, brother, let me ride on the back of yours. Oh, no, I'm just going to sleep on my bike because I'll be damned. I'll leave my bike in any parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to stay there until I feel like I'm sober to ride again. There you go. <laughs> Hell, yeah. Let's be, you know what? I got a bar. I got a bar I go to. And if I've had one too many, the barmaid, when when I'm there, if she knows I'm on my bike, she will actually start feeding me coffee. <laughs> nice. well, that that's, good bar. Bar. that's a good bar. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's not a matter of if you crash. It's a matter of when. when you crash. When? And why do, why why make it uh, yeah. extenuating circumstances? Right. 
Well, one thing that I drink. <laughs> one, one thing that I really hate is when somebody's getting drunk or high and they got a freaking passenger on the back. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's oh, yeah. yeah that's, oh, God. That's a no-go. That's so fucking much worse than, than I'm, I'm, even drinking yourself. I've told so many female friends. I have a lot of women that I'm friends with, that, you know, just put, you know, put straight up Don't just friends. Him. And, Don't go with him. Yeah, I, I, I tell them all the time. I'm like, man, you know, they're so quick. Females are so quick to get on a bike with some dude like, oh, he's cute. He's yeah. got a bike. I want to go for a ride. You know, and they jump on the back of the bike, and next thing you know, you know, I'm at their funeral. You know, it's like, yeah, you got to be careful with that, man. You know, to all the women out there, man, watch that shit, man. Don't be dumb. But it's also vice versa, man. Especially if you got if if your 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 passenger's drunk. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I've had plenty of those. Yeah. I've had some <laughs> duct tape moments. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, how many of them have you duct tape or strapped them on? <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, dude. Yeah, so yeah, I'll, I'll tell the story real quick again, man. I was I was rolling down the highway, and it was like two of my bros, right? My one brother, he just got out the joint. So he's on parole. My other guy's on paperwork, too. So there's three of us, and we're rolling, man. And we stop at this bar, and this chick, this drunk chick, out of all the bikes in the parking lot, she picks me that she wants to go for a ride with. And I was on my shovel head. I had no back seat. No rear pegs, just a ratty ass shovel head. So she wants to ride. And I'm like, well, listen, darling, I'm going this way and I'm not coming back. So if you come with me, you already know what's up, sweetheart. You're staying the night. She goes, okay, no problem. She jumps on the back. We're rolling down the highway. Next thing I know, I feel her go limp and she's falling off the bike, guy. <laughs> so I'm like, what am I going to do, man? <clears throat> so I'm hanging on to her with my, with, with my right arm and I'm going down the road. I get to the shoulder. And I'm like, I, I downshifted with one hand all the way down to first to the point where I was about, to, you know, I, I was like doing this, you know, rocking back and forth. <laughs> I just let her go, dude. I, there's nothing I could do, but I, I let her go. I let her roll into the grass. She rolled down into the ditch, busted her head open. She wakes up. She's like, oh, my God, call 911. What a, what, I'm hurt. And I'm like looking around, and my brothers are like, bro, we can't have no 911 going on here. <laughs> like, I'm looking around. I'm like, "What the fuck do I do?" You know, and I, I look down, and I'm like, "She's already on her phone on 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 the phone with 911." And I look at my bros; they all went like this. And I'm like, "I get back on a bike, and we left her there, dude. <laughs> left her in the middle of the highway somewhere, bro." I was like, "Hey, we gotta go." <laughs> so again, she's man, calling man, man. Hey, be, she was be, calling a bed cab. You're all right. <laughs> You didn't even, you didn't even leave her a five dollar bill for a cab. Bro. Hey, bro, I ain't got time for that bullshit. I got to go. <laughs> These so again, ladies, ladies think about who you're getting on the back of the bike with. Yeah, <laughs> the type that uh, they made that shirt for. The bitch fell off. Yeah. <laughs> We're fresh out of duct tape that day, Hollywood. Uh, yeah, that's, what, that's what Geo said, man. Anyway, before we go, uh, there's going to be a meetup in Algonia, Iowa, where a lot of creators are going, some independent riders there, uh, talking to you, signing stuff. Uh, who's going to be in? Graystar, you in? Owen. Yes, sir. Bedlam. I'm there. Dark Soul, I know you're coming. Hell yeah, I'm coming. Danny, you going to be up there? We'd have ride together. Yeah, yeah, we could definitely ride together. Um... We'll have to get like closer to that date because you know I, I live by, day by day, man. I, I can't make plans that far. J man, <laughs> uh, I can't get the time off work, but it's a weekend, so I may be able to leave Friday after work and head up. So yes, I definitely want to go, but I can't say promise for no reason I can't be there. You know what I mean? What's the, what's the date for this event? Uh, June thirtieth through July. Okay. All right. Yeah, a little more closer to it. I can give a guaranteed answer. You know what I mean? Rock and roll. Thank anyway, you. guys, it was an awesome show. Next week, we'll have uh, segments. We'll kind of break them up for you guys. Uh, each one of the independent writers are going to have their own thing that they want to talk about. Uh, I know uh, Graystar is going to be talking tech. Bedlam's going to be talking pain and body. Uh, Dark Soul, D.O.T., Danny, I got to get a... Uh, Together with on that, maybe you'll talk, talk about, about strippers. 
Well, there you go, Mike. Solo bikes. No, I kind of like this, man. Danny B. Low talk. <laughs> I like this. One. Oh, come on, Dean. You know you want to talk about that Pan Am. <laughs> What's and your name again? I'm sorry. Who are you? <laughs> Day Man will be talking about the new bikes in the market and stuff. So we're going to have a real good show. I like that stripper deal. Some of the best. Yeah. <laughs> Some good ones here, hey, Scott. I, I know, I, I know, you know what the I'm talking about, Hollywood. <laughs> if you have one on with you. You know what? I'll get a few. Get a, we'll get a couple <laughs> strippers on if you want. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think we can arrange that. Yeah, I think we can. Uh, anyway, that was an awesome episode, guys. The replay will be on Roku as well as Amazon Fire YouTube. Uh, there's going to be an audio version out on the podcast platform. And you guys can go and download... Uh, the independent writers, what they usually do is download the uh, the video and they put it on their channel. <laughs> and we got Bedlam who likes using uh, egg beaters on. You know, I, I don't know, man. Is you know, you into that brown eye stuff? Uh, kind of, you know, it worries me a little. What? The, what are you talking about? Hey, what's up with all this brown eye hate? What, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> what, what the fuck? You have to look for the brown eye. Where'd that come yeah. from? You must be thinking about somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you other people that I know of. <laughs> right? We'll catch you guys later. We're out of here, man. Adios. All right, guys. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Uh oh. Talk about your channels. I want them over there. Graystar, what's your channel name? My channel is Graystar's Place. It's music, motorcycles, <laughs> and technology and outdoorsy stuff. Bedlam. Some Pan Ams. No. <laughs> no. Bedlam. It's Bedlam's, Bedlam's Asylum and basically about artwork, you know, paint, you name it, bikes, rallies, you name it. Just all around everything. Dark Soul. <clears throat> I'm on TikTok. Uh, Dark Soul underscore uh, trucker. Uh, don't post he much on there, but I'm going to start putting a little bit more. But coming from a guy who drive, rides a victory. That's <laughs> right. That's right. And I'm proud Might of well it. Be, might as well be a Pan Am. <laughs> I know, exactly. I'll it race you. Like I bet you I'll beat you. Oh, on my dad? I'll take that bet. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'll, take I'll take that, that bet. I'll take any victory you want to bring to the table, homie. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say I'd race you. I said I'd <laughs> Right on. <laughs> Danny, what's up with your channels and stuff? When do you post all the stuff? Um, I'm Danny D Low on Instagram, on YouTube. Um, I'm Danny D Low underscore on TikTok. Basically, I talk about uh, MC Protocol, uh, the One Percenter Life, biker stuff, and I do a lot of talking shit to haters. <laughs> hey. Well, he does. I get a kick yeah. out of it. Dark Soul sees that. <laughs> yeah. J Man, what's yours? Uh, I got Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, and <coughs> ain't going nowhere. So, you know, my channel is what my channel is. If you don't like it, sorry. Rock out. Wow, that was well, really informative. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> we'll see you guys right. next Saturday on the Independent Rider. <laughs> Peace out, everybody. Peace out, guys.